Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. Today, we are discussing a watch that launched in 2018, 45 millimeters in steel with a ceramic bezel insert. This is the Tag Heuer Carrera GMT Chronograph. The watch is 45 in diameter, 17 millimeters thick. From lug to lug, it is 52.6 millimeters, and because the bracelet is pivoted at its end, it is just 52.6 millimeters across the wrist. There are no projecting end links. We have a broad, though somewhat irregular, 22.5 millimeter spacing between the lugs. On my wrist of 16 centimeters circumference, it fits. But if your wrist is any smaller than mine, I'm going to suggest a different Tag Heuer or a different Carrera. It is a very large watch. The timepiece borrows a little bit of style guide from the Book of Hublot with the open dial, as well as the size, which is immense. Again, 16 centimeters circumference wrist or larger. It's not as thick as the 17 millimeter thickness would suggest on the wrist, but it's still thick enough that you're probably going to get it hung up on a tight dress cuff. Let's do one more down the barrel shot and then take a look at the bracelet. The bracelet is a handsome piece. You could see that there are several different focal planes as recesses are formed between the intermediate links in the center. And then we have differential finish with polish and satin. Outer faces are polished. We do have a pin sleeve fixture system. So all removable links are fixed in place with a pin sleeve connection methodology. We do have a half link for fine sizing. If you want to size this at home, you're going to need a watchmaker's block and punch. That's how you size pin sleeves. And you can see that there are several removable links on both sides. So you should be able to get the right size for your presumably quite large wrist. Twin trigger release. You can see the Tag Heuer logo externally. It looks a little bit like a home plate in baseball. And then there's a thick gauge single fold deploying clasp. To its credit, the watch does have a very thin deploying clasp. These structures usually are a little bit bulkier. Rolling around to the case, the signature of every Carrera since the first in 1963 has been these strong angular lugs. They project out from the case band and they have a large sculptural volume to them. They're not cropped or shortened or stubby to permit a larger case. A larger case, larger lugs, because on a Carrera, these lugs really are the star. Now you can see they're broken out from the case band a little bit. That's something that's not universal to all Carrera models. Sometimes they are integrated into the case band, but they are always large and prominent. You can see that there's a contrasting finish. It is longitudinal on the lugs and then it's vertical on the case band. The bezel has a little red chapter ring that runs all the way around it. And then you could see a contrast between the satin finished flank of the bezel and then the upper portion is polished, giving way to a 24 hour ceramic bezel insert that acts as the scale for reading the second time zone. Ceramic's very scratch resistant, and between the sapphire and the ceramic, those are the parts of the watch that are most likely to take a hit. So the ceramic and the sapphire help to guard your watch against scratches. You can see the Tag Heuer logo with media blasting for contrast on the outer face of the crown. There's a little rubber knurled shoulder for better grasping the crown. And then we have two piston style, polished and satinated pump pushers for the chronograph. The dial is open and airy. There's a flange outboard for reading minutes, seconds, and fractions of seconds. Then we have applied steel rhodium-plated hour indices and then steel rhodium-plated hands. We'll do a loom shot real quick. And if you look down to the lower left-hand corner of the dial, right around 8 o'clock, you can see that the 24-hour second time zone hand is luminescent. The watch includes two features that are always convenient, one of which is a quick set date the other of which is a quick set system for the local hour. You can see it adjusts only in one direction because like an ETA 2893 or 2836, it has a quick set and then it has a second intermediate setting direction that activates a secondary function. On a 2893, that would move the 24 hour hand. Here, it moves the local hour hand. If you wanna move the 24 hour hand, you activate hacking or stop seconds, and now you move everything in sync. And what you do is you set that 24 hour hand first, then you go back to the intermediate position and you set the local time. Okay, twin time, it is that. Independent 12 and 24 hour time zones. We have little floating chapter rings for chronograph minutes, chronograph hours, and then constant seconds. The constant seconds ring is blue. Each ring is slightly dished with a polished 
outer ring and then an inner face that is inverse conical and features the striations of a concentric pattern. There's a little frame for reading the date. The date has a sort of white backlight panel and then it's skeletonized in a ring that orbits the dial. It does feature the Hoyer 02 GMT movement. The watch has a column wheel chronograph. We'll open up the clasp, take a quick look at the case back. You can see the column wheel is colored red and visible on the reverse side. The column wheel feel is very positive. It's impressively crisp. And then we have a vertical clutch. So when the chronograph engages, there's no extraneous movement to the chronograph seconds hand. And if you wish, because there's no play in a vertical clutch, you can leave it running full time without any additional wear and tear to the movement. You can see it's a semi-instantaneous jumping minute display. The vertical clutch is handy if you just like to leave your chrono running full time. On the reverse side, you can see that Hoyer 02. This is a movement that was stillborn for a long time, but it came back to life first as the basis for a tourbillon, and now it's finding wider use in mainstream Tag Heuer watches. It's automatic winding with a 75 to 80 hour power reserve, vertical clutch, column wheel, 33 pivot jewels. It uses Etichron for fine adjustment, both of timing and beat error, which I love to see because Etichron's a great system. This 33 joule movement protected down to 100 meters in this water resistant watch, and it has proven to be both reliable and accurate. Reach out to tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.